in a random street and it's evening which always means I'm picking up old computer stuff. In this case, old Apple computer stuff. Some of you may already recognize it. Well, let's take it home and see. So I would say the main attraction is in this crate. Let's start taking some of it out. Starting with this mouse, followed by this PAL module, a very hefty power brick. Even the seller let me hold it and said that it's been a while since he saw such a clunky piece of equipment. Interesting DIN connector. Then a bag with random cables I won't bother you with. Then we have a lovely external 5.25 inch floppy drive. Now let's try to get out this CRT monitor. And ah, nice, there it is, the star of the show. Never expected to have one of these in my collection as they tend to go for like more than 300 bucks. So yeah, this Apple IIc is amazing to add to my collection. This is the new Apple IIc. This is a computer they call Junior. You might think they're similar, but this one can only run this many programs, while the Apple IIc can run this many. The Apple comes with its disk drive built in, so it's much smaller. Even the price is small. Now, which one would you rather take home? The new Apple IIc. Is it a bad thing to show Apple stuff on a Commodore monitor? I'm not sure. So here it is a bit more up close and what a lovely little computer. Although the keys appear to be a bit stiff to type on. I think we can fix that. I got this one after the seller got in touch with me saying that the person who outbid me never got back to them so I could come and pick it up, which I did the same night. An Apple IIc is something I would try not to pass up on. This is a computer from 1984 that runs on a 65 CO2. On the back it has a bunch of ports, the power in, printer serial port, external floppy drive port, composite video out, video expansion port, serial modem port and a joystick mouse port. The computer of course also came with this CRT monitor. This monitor though I will not try as the Riva capacitor probably blew, but I will have to check that. Off camera I did some testing of the power brick and it seems to be safe to try the computer with. Also reading online they seem to be more reliable than the ones supplied with for instance the Commodore 64. With the computer also came something that I of course really love, floppy disks. Interesting what the image of the mouse does with the camera. There are about 20 floppy disks here. The first one being a copy of the system utilities. And something that I found really exciting was to see actual Apple floppy disks. These will be nice to go on my archive site. So let's plug in the power and test the computer. It turns on immediately and we hear the disk bang. I sort of struggle with this floppy drive mechanism for some reason. Let's put the copy disk in and see what happens. Something is happening. Let's adjust the brightness on this little screen I got for I think a 1 euro 50. Some weird characters on the screen. Apple IIc Systems Utilities 1984. Nice. Seems to be a sort of disk utility type program. Let's do a quick test to see if all the keys work. Now it's time to try other disks. And well, I have to be honest, this is where things will start to go south. As it displays a boot error. ERR0A. Here are some of the other disks that were included. I like those Apple labels. 
In this bag is some more stuff I got with the computer. On top, some more floppy disks that looked intriguing, but after some testing turned out to be related to MS-DOS, not to the Apple II. In this envelope, some printed out documentation. I see that a lot with computers from this era. It is in Dutch and about working with Apple Works. And then the books. This nice one is in Dutch. The other one's in English. I won't bother you with the titles separately, but here they are in split screen. I want to add these to my archive too. Although interestingly, the seller said when he handed them over to me that they are probably books that are easily to find on the web. Moving on to the next day. New day, new opportunities, I thought. Well, turns out not, as the drive still won't read any of the disks. Also, this known working disk gave back an expected error. I wanted to try the external disk drive. Maybe that would work, but no. I believe the 2C won't boot from the external drive. Another corrupted disk. I wanted to try my floppy MU, but turns out I had to change that back over to the Apple II mode, since it was now in Macintosh mode, as I used it with my Macintosh Plus. So what possibly is wrong with this computer? I already tried a cleaning disk in the drives without any luck. While most people familiar with the Apple IIc are probably already screaming at the screen or typing in the comment section that this is probably related to bad RAM, something the IIc is known for suffering from. A good indication for a RAM problem is the constant showing of weird characters on the screen or bars like the ones it's showing here. Let's do some troubleshooting. I sort of feel obliged to now show the computer TLC intro screen. Let's open the case, which with the Apple II requires the removal of a couple screws and the snapping of a couple plastic snaps. The computer is really condensed. The keyboard holds on to the case of the floppy drive. Ah, and there's the board. A good starting point is to reseat the socketed chips. Most of them sort of sounded like they needed that. Then I removed the disk drive from the computer, showing another part of the motherboard. Interesting mechanism. Let's remove the shield to get a better look at it. I lubricated the drive rails and cleaned the head some more with some alcohol. Time to try another disk. Cutting to the chase, still the same issues as the discs won't be read by the computer. Oh, and still those lines on the screen. This original Apple disc even gave a weirder result. To see if the issue lies with the computer or with the disk drives, I wanted to see if switching the drive with the drive from the external unit would change how things are working. Getting the drive out is pretty straightforward, and as I hoped, it's the same drive. Let's swap them over. But sadly, Still the same issues. So this probably lies with the computer. I could try these drives with my Apple IIe, but I feel they probably work normally. The next step I tried was taking out the chips and deoxing the sockets. I have to say that the chips did look like they could use a bit of a clean, but as expected that doesn't fix our issues. This is where we move into uncharted territory that as a retro amateur I don't feel too comfortable. But let's try it anyways. First, let's see what kind of power is going to the RAM chips. It should be 5 volts. And when I test that, it shows 5 volts. Time to try my oscilloscope to see what is wrong. And before we look at the chips, I just hate for a second the website of Regal, as I spent about 3 hours to try to connect my scope to my computer, so I could capture some of the out. There we go. Welcome to uncharted territory. When I do research online, all the forums suggest that the RAM in the computer is probably dead, since the empty RAM this computer uses is prone to failing. 
To verify if the chips are bad, I will be probing pin 15, labeled CAS, C-A-S. This pin should show a regular output. So I tested all the chips and this pin seems to be normal. Although I thought I should try this also with a disk drive connected. And then it shows the following. Seems to be a little interference. Then I tested the RAS pin, which should have the same sort of output like the CAS line. Based on this amateur test, I would say there is not really something wrong with the RAM. Almost would say sadly, as every time I try to look for suggestions, I get pointed to the RAM. I think we need to move on to another suspect, and that is this chip, the integrated wash machine. A rare chip with no modern day replacements. Well, turns out I might have a spare, because when I looked up the motherboard of a Macintosh SEFDHD, turns out that they also use an integrated wash machine chip, and on this picture it's even socketed. So probably the next thing to try would be to see if we can socket that chip and try another one. But that is for a future video. Also, first I hope to get some advice from people with more experience, as I might be reading the outputs wrongly, as again, I am a retro amateur. Of course, I digitized all the floppies that came with the computer, although I did encounter some issues with the Appleworks disks. You will be able to find and try them out over at my archive site. If you want to see how I archive these disks, you can watch my Adventures in Archiving episode on the topic. I also managed to already archive some of the books, which are also available on my website. Hopefully in a future video we will be able to use these disks with the Apple IIc. But for now, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.